Welcome adventurers. Today, we're gonna to be doing a quick video, hopefully quick, about ideal party composition. There's no really wrong way to build your party because a lot of the classes are really versatile and you can train into pretty much any skills that you might need. But I think I might have stumbled across a bit of a formula that you can use to build out your parties. All right, let's start with the front line, the damage, because let's face it, Pathfinder is a game where you are fighting a lot and it can be brutal and the best defense is a good offense. And by best offense, I pretty much mean a barbarian, maybe a fighter, maybe a monk. The point is you want something that hits hard or hits often or both, is steady, is reliable. For that reason, I don't think you would maybe, maybe not want an inventor or a thaumaturge because yeah, they have to make some checks to see if they can turn on their bonus damage. They might critically fail those checks and end up kind of hurting or debuffing themselves. That's not what you want about like that workhorse of your front line. So yeah, start simple, start with a barbarian. Now, I think you wanna follow up pretty much immediately with someone who's going to help that barbarian or fighter or monk or whatever out. So you're going to add a second martial build. Now, I like to call this position the flanking fighter. Not necessarily a fighter, though fighter would be a great choice. And they won't necessarily be flanking all the time, but the point is they pretty much exist to support that main damage dealer on the front line. They can absolutely do this by moving into a flanking position. They could do it by uh, using like your athletics actions, like they could trip or grapple. Um, they can simply, you know, be a second target that the enemies target so that it's not just all the damage being poured into your barbarian. A champion would be a really good idea for this because you could actually mitigate some of that damage. I think that a monk would be a really cool idea because monks have a lot of movement capabilities, they have great defenses, and with flurry of blows, they have a great action economy. So a monk would be a really, really good flanking fighter choice because you could basically just sort of like move into position, do whatever you need to with two actions, and then still have that flurry of blows for two strikes afterwards. A rogue, Obviously another really good idea because if you move into a flanking position as a rogue, you're gonna land that sweet, sweet sneak attack damage. But really here, I would honestly say any martial character would work. Any character that is basically designed around melee, combat, has good defenses, has good attack and damage bonuses. Any of those would be fine for your flanking fighter. All right, so now that you have that primary main weapon, supported by the flanking fighter, you need some overall support. And here is where you do need to introduce a caster. I think that you need a caster for ranged attack options, for elemental damage options, for healing, for buffs, for debuffs. Obviously it's a bit tough to do all of those with just one build. So you could look at what your first two characters offer a bit. You know, maybe that flanking character is a fighter who trains into a bunch of wisdom and has medicine training, and therefore you can pick a caster that doesn't need to focus on healing. Or maybe um, your primary fighter isn't a barbarian. Maybe it is a monk and they're very charismatic so they can demoralize. Well, now your support caster doesn't necessarily need to focus on debuffs as much. But you do want to be there for maximum flexibility. I do think that your best choices would probably be a bard because, you know, bards are great. Uh, you're going to buff your attacks so much. You can prepare him of healing if you need some healing. You've got the soothe spell if you need some healing. Plus the occult spell list has a lot of other great options. Uh, but I mean, you could also be a druid. Man, that is a great choice for healing as well. Cleric, obviously for healing, but I would almost say a cleric you would might want to save a little bit later for when you have a bigger party and then you make a dedicated just heal bot for that. I think for this third wheel here, the first support, you really do need a little bit more versatility than you might get from a cleric. So going with one of the more traditional spellcasters is going to be a better choice. 
I think sorcerers and wizards would be fine. I just think that, I mean, in a, a psychic, of course, would be cool too. I know that like the restore of the mind is a really cool heal buff. They've got some buffs, debuffs, really cool things. But I do think for that third option, I would go with either a druid or a bard. So after you've got your core three, uh, you pretty much have an adventuring party. However, most parties tend to be bigger than that. Four, five, I've played in some six and sevens. Maybe an eight? No, I think just a seven. Anyway, the point is, for that fourth character after your primary DPS fighter, your flanking fighter, and your support caster, I think you can add either another marshal or another caster. It's up to you. I'm playing in a party of four, uh, and we do have two marshals and two casters. We've got a wizard and a druid uh, supporting our barbarian and inventor, and it works great. But you could totally have, you know, three marshals with just one support caster at this point. It would be fine. I guess it's just a matter of, do you want to keep hitting stuff really hard, or do you want to be a little bit more versatile, uh, a little bit more whimsical, I guess, with your casting? I would say if you add a third marshal, it's probably a good idea to add a ranged marshal at this point, like a ranger, like a crossbow ace or a gunslinger, for example, uh, just because at a party of four, you might start running into situations that you can't just smash your way through, flying creatures, for example. So having two characters who can hit from range will probably be pretty important. All right, after you have your fourth character, you pretty much just keep reversing what you last did. So what I mean by that, let's say you went with Marshall, Marshall, Caster, Marshall. Well, then your fifth character should be Caster, offsetting that last Marshall that you chose. If you went Marshall, Marshall, Caster, Caster, then I would go with a Marshall for your fifth. And then you just keep repeating. So whatever your last was, you reverse it. And you just kind of keep doing that until you reach your party size. So that means you could have a party that would be like four marshals and two casters as a party of six, or it could be three and three. Uh, but you probably wouldn't ever want to end up with more casters than you do marshals at that party size. Again, it is just a, it's a brutal game of combat. So y you need to fight, you just do. And that's really it. Once you get up into the larger party size, you'll probably start seeing overlaps in characters. So it gets to be a little bit less important to make sure you fill out all of your niche needs. I mean, if you have a party of seven, you will have multiple people who can heal in various ways. Chances are you might even have multiple casters who cast from the same spell list. So it gets to be a little bit less important as you build. Uh, you could even have repeats if you wanted, though I don't think I've ever played in or listened to a party that has repeats. If you have, let me know. I'd like to hear about that in the comments. Well, and there you have it. So to repeat, you start off with a frontline DPS fighter. You support them with a frontline flanking fighter. Then you add a support caster. For number four, you can go wild card. You're gonna either do another marshal or another caster. And then for five, you reverse whatever you did for four. And then for six, you reverse number five and you just keep doing that. You don't have to do this, of course, but it is a good way to ensure that you meet a lot of variety in your party, that you cover all your bases, and maybe more importantly, that each player has a role and feels like they're making a really big impact and that they contribute to the party. That is the way you're gonna have the most fun playing in your weekly, bi-weekly, however often you can play sessions. Um, if anybody's played as parties that are drastically different, let me know how that went. I'd like to hear about it. Uh, it's always interesting to hear uh, other people's experiences in the game, though I will say probably not intentionally, but I think every party I've listened to on a podcast or an actual play or on a Twitch stream or anything or have played in has followed this like within a character or two. So it really just seems to sort of be the 
natural flow of things. I think I've just sort of like worked backwards to put organization around it. All right, that's it. Hope it helps. Have fun out there, adventures.